Today the RBA is cornered. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, today the RBA will decide whether to lift the cash rate again and we will be knocking on the door of 10 lifts in under a year. A very rapid adjustment despite the RBA's earlier assurance that there will be no rises until 2024. Their track record is frankly atrocious. Having taken rates too low, they force-fed the banks on ultra-low funding and capitulated to the markets after trying yield curve control. The net consequences of all this was a massive spike in home prices and lending and eye-watering levels of household debt and financial stress. And as we discussed yesterday, home prices are falling fast and the financial pressures are rising on many. So it seems that the central bank is all but certain to increase interest rates at its first meeting of the year. And while most economists and traders see the Reserve Bank lifting its cash rate by a quarter point on Tuesday to 3.35%, that will be the highest level since September 2012, CBA and ANZ both highlight a probability of a bigger height, while Bloomberg actually sees a mini 15-point move and JP Morgan says a pause. Lowe has repeatedly said that the bank is not on a preset path to rates and that it will do what is necessary to bring inflation back to its 2 to 3% target. While the bank will release updated quarterly estimates on Friday and probably touch on them in today's statement, its November forecast only showed inflation returning to target in early 2025. That said, the RBA had forecast fourth quarter CPI would be at the peak. What they didn't predict was the underlying strength of inflation with the key trimmed mean gauge soaring 6.9% from 6.1% in the third quarter, and that's higher than the RBA's 6.5% forecast. Australia's broadening price pressure prompted CBA's Gareth Ed to move to see a non-trivial threat of a 40-point hike. And ANZ's Catherine Birch reckons the risks are a bit more tilted to 50 basis points given the inflation reading. The RBA finds itself in a tight spot, with widespread data now showing the economy is cooling, but core inflation is uncomfortably hot, said Andrew Ticehurst, macro strategist at Numera Holdings. The risks would be for a larger move rather than a move, in our view. Talhurst and Birch both expect the RBA to take the cash rate to 3.85% by May, a more aggressive prediction than the consensus of 3.6%, and CBA's Ed forecast a pause after February's meeting. Traders boosted their forecast for the terminal RBA rate to about 3.75% on Monday from 3.65% last Friday after the US jobs robust data raised expectations for the Fed's hiking cycle. The RBA's rate hikes have driven a downturn in the housing market that's beginning to weigh on broader activity. Retail sales fell sharply in December, while data on Monday showed quarterly volumes also declined, which will likely detract from GDP. Employment growth is similarly slowing as business confidence wanes. Now, Lowe maintains that the RBA can bring the economy in for a soft landing, and the IMF agrees there's a good chance of that. With Australia's key trading partner China ditching COVID-0 and reopening, and inflation beginning to cool in other major economies, the global backdrop is improving. But Australian prices remain hot, in part because of the services industry that drives the economy is now rebounding and wages are rising faster. And the RBA is also grappling with a longer than usual lag in transmission because a substantial number of home loans were fixed when the cash rate was set at a record low of 0.1%. Economists see a pressure point in the economy when the $370 billion of loans shift to variable rates this year, peaking about June and July. The second quarter of 2023 is when fixed rate mortgages start to roll off aggressively, said James Wilson, a senior fund manager at Jamison Coote Bonds. The RBA will be aware of that, so we may see a pause after the March meeting. And the RBA will weigh signs of weaker hiring and household spending against a sharp acceleration in core inflation, 
when it discusses its policy settings. In December, the board considered a half-point hike and a pause before deciding to raise by a quarter point, meaning it was looking at alternatives. And Governor Philip Lowe has the rare advantage of having watched the Federal Reserve's meeting last week when it downshifted to a quarter point hike and signalled some more tightening to come. That gives the Governor a read on the global picture, with his British and European counterparts also hiking. So the consensus is that most central banks are approaching their terminal rate and the RBA is in a similar position to the Bank of Korea, though, where the economy is starting to cool, but inflation is failing to follow the script. So I would be surprised at anything less than 25 basis points, and more is certainly possible, and it'll be interesting to see how the markets react. And we'll discuss all of this in our live show at 8pm Sydney tonight. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.